380,000 versus 225 million kilometers. Three days versus three years. Six crude landings and plenty of experience versus no landings and no experience. And of the about 630 people that have ever been in space, only six have done so for longer than six months. And yet, NASA wants people on Mars by the next decade. Some risks we can mitigate. On others, we will have to gamble with human lives. Let's talk about them. Mitosis inhibition, DNA damage, cellular death. These are the effects of radiation on the human body. During their long journey, astronauts will be showered by it. Most of the danger comes from what we call cosmic radiation, a sci-fi badass name for what are basically super high energy particles originating in the depths of space. They come from supernovas and we're not sure what else. It's an open field of research cry about it. They're basically atomic nuclei deprived of their protons or stray protons that are not orbiting a nucleus and they heat your body at crazy high speeds. Our sun contributes as well but not that much. A tiny fraction of those particles are supercharged. They have millions of times more energy than the typical protons shot by the sun during solar flares. They can penetrate any shielding. We cannot stop them. And when they cruise through your body, they devastate the DNA strands of any cell on their path. Very rarely, cosmic radiation comes into huge bursts, aptly named gamma ray bursts. There's a theory for which one of these bursts might have been responsible for one of the great five extinction events that happened on our planet, wiping out 85% of marine life. If one were to hit us again, we'd be f gone. Anyways, cosmic radiation exposure can seriously increase the risk of cancer. Wanna know by how much? You're a little nosy, eh? <sighs> According to NASA, the average American is overweight, consumes alcohol and has a pretty unhealthy diet. Kinda sounds like your mother. A person like that has a 21% risk of dying of cancer. For a non-smoking astronaut, that risk is 15%. But after this mission, it would shoot up to 20%. If they kept the healthy lifestyle, that is. For comparison, nuclear power plant employees have a maximum threshold of a 0.5% increase in risk every year. And in practice, it's lower than 0.1%. NASA is considering reducing radiation exposure by having a mission with a shorter stay on Mars and a shorter travel time. But, I mean, of course they'd make the trip as short as possible, right? Well, kind of. Shorter travel times require a lot more fuel. NASA explains this with the concept of gear ratios. Basically, a gear ratio of 10 means that the whole journey would require 10 kilograms of fuel per kilogram of cargo. People, equipment, the amogus imposter. A ratio of 20 means that the whole trip would take 20 kilograms of fuel per kilogram of cargo and so on. A slower trip would make for a 1000 days long mission with a gear ratio of 10.6. But they could travel a little bit faster and leave Mars after a shorter stay. In which case the mission would last 850 days and have a gear ratio of 34.4. There are a number of challenges that pertain to landing on, surviving and leaving the bloody planet. If something goes wrong during the landing phase, a mission abort could mean having to go back in orbit. That has the unpleasant side effect of potentially leaving the astronauts without enough fuel to come back to Earth. They'd be effectively stranded in space. If instead a mission abort were to be performed while trying to leave the surface of the planet, it would mean they would have to land again on Mars. That's way harder than aborting a liftoff here on Earth because here all the astronauts would have to do is land safely. On Mars they would also have to land in the right place. Landing too far away from the gear and structures required to prepare for another liftoff would leave them again stranded. And to top it all off establishing structures on Mars might be hard as fuck. Now gravity on Mars is three times weaker than gravity here on Earth but that is still twice the moon's gravity meaning that all of the moon structures that we will build before going to Mars might not be easily reusable on the red planet. If and once Mars is reached, the astronauts will have to generate their own energy to prepare for return and to power the endless amount of experiments they must perform. 
Let's use solar power. A great advantage of it is that you'd get energy at predictable times from sunrise to sunset. Except you wouldn't. Mars is blanketed in dust. It gets everywhere. An astronaut's visor, a rover's gear, your butt crack and on solar panels. The Opportunity rover died in 2019 because of too much dust on its solar panels. Making it worse, dust gets scattered all over the place by storms and storms on Mars can make the sun disappear. They can last for weeks and the worst ones engulf the whole planet in turbulence. Wait... Turbulence? Let's use wind, right? Right? Okay, look at this. It's how nerds that never get laid describe the amount of force that wind exerts on an object. It depends on a few things. The surface of impact, the velocity of wind, I'm not qualified enough for this one, and the density of the atmosphere. And here lies the problem. The atmosphere is way less dense on Mars. The fastest recorded Martian wind reached 108 km per hour, which is way more than what you would need on Earth for good power generation. But with the air density on Mars, that would give you the same generating power that 14 km per hour winds would give you on Earth. A storm on Mars would feel like a breeze on our planet. Radio communication travels at the speed of light. That sounds pretty damn fast, but it really is not. As the spaceship gets further away, the time to deliver a message will increase. When the crew will be on Mars, it will take up to 22 minutes to deliver one message and just as much to get a reply. That means that the astronauts will have to be incredibly self-sufficient when it comes to maintenance and emergency fixes, because the more an astronaut needs to learn, the higher the amount of stuff they will forget. And I almost forgot that the worst part is that there will be a really brief period of three weeks of absolute radio silence happening because of a Mars solar conjunction. Our fat burning sun will get in our fucking way. For this, NASA is considering introducing a relay, which would allow to redirect signals around the sun. But again, it wouldn't make communications any faster. Nothing could. We are already at the theoretical limit, the ultimate speed, the speed of light. There are some risks and a lot of uncertainty, especially regarding long-term effects of space exploration on the human body. Remember, only six people stayed in space for longer than six months, and nobody even got close to two or three years. And astronauts lose between 1 and 1.5% of their bone density for every month they spend in space. If it keeps happening at that rate during the whole three years, it would compound to a whopping 30% of bone density lost. And yet, as much as I've been discouraging the whole idea of going to Mars in this dumbass video, NASA is obviously taking things pretty seriously. We're talking more than a decade of research and experimentation by the smartest virgins on the planet. Can can we eliminate risk? Absolutely not. Will the brave astronauts still face them and push the boundaries of human curiosity and exploration even farther? F yeah! And they will do so, fully prepared to tackle whatever comes at them.